get a new reaction this hour from the Biden administration on Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's decision to hide his hospitalization at a time when America is facing active threats around the world. And reminder, he is in the chain of command. Just a short time ago, NSC spokesman John Kirby told reporters that there's no plan for any changes regarding Austin's position. This is despite growing calls for his resignation. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany. Here with my co-host, Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Hudson Institute senior fellow, Rebecca Heinrichs, and Fox News contributor and host of The Guy Benson Show on Fox News Radio, Guy Benson. Austin's ordeal began on December 22nd when he underwent a minor elective procedure at Walter Reed. He then returned to the intensive care unit last Monday, that was January 1st, with, quote, severe pain. Austin's next in command was given some of his duties the next day, but wait for it, she was on vacation in Puerto Rico at the time and was not even told that he was hospitalized. Why were they hiding this? President Biden wasn't informed until Thursday. That's right, the White House had no clue that the Secretary of Defense was hospitalized. Senior Pentagon officials in Congress only learned the news on Friday. Austin's condition was so closely guarded that according to Politico, one DOD official was told by Austin's aides that the secretary was, quote, working from home for the week. That, of course, was not true. Austin is still recovering at Walter Reed. We wish him the best. And he has issued this statement, quote, I recognize I could have done a better job ensuring that the public was appropriately informed. I commit to doing better. This was my medical procedure, and I take full responsibility for my decisions about disclosure. A better job? There's a war in Europe. There's a war in the Middle East. Attacks against U.S. forces in the Middle East and the Red Sea. Not to mention Iran, China, North Korea. The list goes on. And Austin, he just wow. disappears without the White House or Secretary of State knowing anything about it. Now politicians on both sides of the aisle are calling for accountability. When you're the Secretary of Defense, uh, you need to make everyone aware that you're actually going to be out of pocket. National Security Council didn't know it. White House didn't know it. Congress didn't know it. We're at a time of a lot of turmoil internationally and suddenly have the Secretary of Defense more than just a matter of wasn't there, actually sent over false information saying I'm working from home when he's not actually available at all. That's a whole different issue. Someone's head should roll if it's not Secretary Lloyd Austin. Someone on his staff uh, dropped the ball here. The handling of this uh, by the Secretary of Defense is totally unacceptable. The Secretary and the administration, frankly, need to step forward. Uh, and give the American people the facts. This was not an appropriate step, not an appropriate way to handle what uh, was his hospitalization. And, and hopefully there will be greater transparency, at least within the administration. You probably should own up to it if they're life threatening. And even an elective procedure like having your gallbladder removed could lead to an infection and could be life threatening. But uh, I think it's better to own up because if people, if you don't tell people the truth, they're going to speculate even worse. Hmm. Well, we wish Secretary Austin a quick recovery and hold him in our prayers at this time. But Rebecca, putting us putting that to the side and talking about what this means for the American people, the control of the U.S. armed forces is executed from the president through the secretary of defense. That's the chain of command. And Don Bacon, moderate Republican, not quick to criticize the administration, said we have a 15 minute warning time for nuclear attacks from Russia and China with the latest weapons. The SecDef is vital in responding. What if there had been a nuclear attack? Well, right. The Secretary of Defense would clearly be somebody that the president would want to be taking advice from in a situation like that. And the fact that they didn't even seem to know that he was missing. So when Secretary Austin gave his sort of apology for not being transparent, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part is that evidently the president didn't know he was gone. The deputy secretary didn't know he was gone. The joint staff didn't know he was gone. Nobody knew. So my question is, who is operating on his behalf. I mean, the United States military took out a senior militia member in Iraq on Thursday, evidently when the Secretary of Defense was incapacitated. So who was governing over that from a civilian leadership standpoint? Who is uh, interacting with our allies for, inter for our prosperity guardian um, of the patrol of the Red Sea? It's, mm. it's a mystery, so there's a lot of questions that still need to be answered about who's in charge. 
Harris, and the lack of knowledge of the White House. I mean, Washington Post says at a White House meeting last week, Jake Sullivan, he's national security advisor, that uh, he noticed that Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was absent. A top official was there instead, but what neither Sullivan nor Baker knew at the moment was Austin was hospitalized at Walter Reed, the White House. You know, I hear everybody with hypotheticals today. I, I don't think you need any. Mm -hmm. I think the actuals are pretty damning, and you gave some of them. Right. Um, the actual things that are going on in the world, the actual 101 times that our U.S. men and military women have been hit in the Middle East on bases and in stations around the Middle East since October 17th, 101 times. I think the actual, I, I, that, that's an ongoing threat. Is he in charge or is he not? But two things really struck me in early reporting with Peter Ducey because the, the information was just coming from John Kirby. So it's not just that they didn't know they were lied to. They were manipulated. What the Situation Room did when it did its check-in to see which cabinet members or which staff were where was they were told that simply Austin was in the D.C. area when, in fact, he had left his home to go to the hospital to have a procedure that he said was elective. Then he returned home from the hospital and then had a complication serious enough to go back to the hospital and remains hospitalized today. The D.C. area was not the complete truth. And truth with omission is a lie. So I, I'm wondering, you know, without hypotheticals, what is the truth here about why the White House, via John Kirby, wants to put a fork in the answer when you ask the question, what was going on with the sec death? during all of these things that don't need hypotheticals because they're real. They're real. And the Pentagon Press Corps, you know, Guy, they're a very serious, fantastic group of reporters. You saw the level of questions and detail they asked mid the fall of Afghanistan. My radar went up even further when I saw the level of concern coming from Jen Griffin, our own fantastic correspondent there. This is the type of behavior you expect from the Chinese government. Barbara Starr at CNN, she's retired now, but this really stood out to me, the lack of disclosure that the SECDEF was ill is a huge strategic failure. She goes on to say, as of tonight, I do not see a way forward for believing the Pentagon tells the truth on anything. These are serious criticisms from serious reporters. Devastating criticisms, deserved criticisms. And we put on the screen a moment ago the statement from Austin now several days ago saying, oh, I understand I could have done better on this and I commit to being better in the future. He's talking about transparency. Here we are days later, we still don't know what happened. We still don't know why he was hospitalized, specifically. They're not giving us those answers. And for John Kirby to come out, as he did today, and say, apparently, no harm, no foul, the job of the secretary is not in jeopardy at all, it's actually rather extraordinary. Because the lack of truth here, the lie that was told, working from home, the terrible judgment exhibited by the secretary, keeping the president out of the loop. You would think these might be fireable offenses, but this is an administration that is allergic to accountability. And if they weren't going to fire a single person over Afghanistan, a debacle with much uh, wider ranging implications, maybe he'll get off the hook for this one. Yeah, by the way, when was the last time anybody was working from home being held responsible and possibly on painkillers? If the pain is serious enough to go back to the hospital, was he ready to work? Yeah, it, it's a great question. And Emily, while most of the media has been pretty lucid in their reporting on this, Axios, Republicans erupt <laughs> over secrecy. So it's Republicans erupting. That's of course. Look, the media is always going to get it wrong. At the end of the day, Secretary Austin ignored the law. And for those who sort of found some semblance of heart in the fact, some reassurance in the fact that he was one of those at the wheel, despite the absolute incompetence of, for example, President Biden, should now take this as a sign that the entire administration was either asleep at the wheel or blatantly ignored the law. And, and you know, to your point, absolutely, troops are drawing combat pay right now. Hmm. And while President Biden was flipping around in the, in the Caribbean for his multiple nth vacation, the secretary, the, the secretary, deputy secretary of defense who, who took over the reins from Secretary Austin. She was on vacation in Puerto Rico. Think about the ineptitude that this shows. And for me, the highlight as well was that President Biden didn't notice. Think about yourselves in your workplace. At all times, my executive producer and multiple people on the team know exactly where I am. I am in constant communication with them. If they all of a sudden stopped hearing from me, 
they would know within a few minutes. They would sound the alarm or they would inquire. So to me, the two-way street information, the fact that it was paused on both ends is what is so problematic. For no one to notice, does he not assemble communication both ways? I mean, yeah. this is an absolute travesty. Such an important point, Emily. I mean, for anyone questioning who is in control in the White House and whether it's truly the president, this does very little to shore up your wonders. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.